What's brewing, coffee lovers? Welcome to The Caffeine Show. In this video, we're gonna be discussing the new McDonald's flat white advert, the Oomph coffee maker, and we're gonna be joined by these guys. Hello guys, it's Alesh and Radek from European Coffee Trip. And today it's honor to be here in the studio and filming video for you. We'll be tasting delicious Geisha coffee from Caravan and we'll be using our favorite method that is V60. So McDonald's takes a second swipe at specialty coffee. This should come as no surprise that advertising agency Leo Burnett London have created this commercial after the success of their first original Shops advert, released exactly a year ago. Again, they play on the insecurities of their customers in a snobby specialty coffee environment. If you haven't seen the first video, McDonald's depicts their befuddled cafe goers yearning for the simpler days of coffee, mocking hipster coffee culture with its extravagant menus and complicated brew methods. It assures them that McDonald's is a place for a simple, no frills cup of coffee. However, in this new ad, it shows people trying to get an explanation as to what a flat white is. While many of the stereotypes are still being played out, it shows a fundamental shift, a shift that McDonald's customers have now a taste for less simple coffee. What, what is a flat white? What's a flat white? Is it like a cappuccino? A cappuccino. Well, that would be a cappuccino. Two thirds coffee, one third milk, one third foam. We contacted a few of our friends in the speciality industry and asked them for their opinion. Darren Elliott from Timber Yard said that he really enjoyed the McDonald's coffee campaign for their quality of humour. They pick fun at indie coffee shops and he says they do it really well. He also says they're really effective in showing speciality off to be the more creative, stylish and higher quality alternative to buying coffee from McDonald's. This kind of spoof humour is particularly British. We're all cynics after all, and yet, despite their fun poking, McDonald's are now copying us by selling flat whites. Our friend Matt Wade from 100 House Coffee makes this point. McDonald's don't talk about the sourcing of speciality coffee or any mention of a sustainable industry, but choose to focus on the nuances of a flat white being broken down to a simple equation of strong latte. And yet, what is a hamburger? It's just reform meat in between two pieces of bread, right? How many people know the difference between a big and tasty and the big tasty, or McFeast and a mega feast, or a McFeast deluxe? He goes on to list 32 incarnations of meat and bread combos, not to mention the chicken and bread alternatives, ending on the bacon clubhouse burger served on an artisan roll. We here at Caffeine think in some ways, we're flattered that speciality is even on ad agencies' radar, but how could we not? Who do you think drinks speciality coffee? Advertising creatives, possibly? The fact that McDonald's are just launching their flat way in 2018 feels very late to the party. Maybe they'll offer soy or oat milk sometime in 2020. Anyway, these are just our opinions. What's yours? Let us know in the comments down below. This episode is brought to you by the Addicted T-shirt. The Addicted T-shirt is part of the Too Much Caffeine series of T-shirts that we have available and one of the best ways that you can support this channel. You'll find these on our website at caffeinemag.com shop. Links are in the description down below. Let's move on to this. It's the oomph. We saw this a few years ago at the Manchester Coffee Festival as they were launching their Kickstarter campaign. Since then, it's got into full production with a few tweaks from the original model. The oomph coffee maker is a pressure brewer and a travel cup in one. They describe the coffee maker as incorporating intelligent grind correction and anti-bitterness lock. So what is it and how does it work? Well, it comes in two distinct pieces and these are made from high quality plastics and there's some real weight to this. It feels really solidly made. This brewing method is similar to that of an Aeropress in that it's an immersion brewer and you press down to force the water through the coffee. However, here's the interesting bit. The coffee flows up the side walls, goes into the travel cup, which sits above. The anti-bitterness lock, as described in the promotional video, is referring to the brew coffee that can be separated from the ground, so they can't continue to extract, an issue that other immersion brewers like the French press has. Another trick up the ump sleeve is that you don't feel if there's enough extraction, you can pull the chamber back up and continue brewing, and then replunge. 
Now that is clever. So what else? Well, it also has an intelligent grind correction. Now, digging into this, we understand this to mean that you can use any grind size in the oomph. But to be fair, you can do this in any immersion brewer. You just leave it in there longer if the grind size is larger. So there appears to be a lack of clarity in what intelligent grind correction means. And it comes across as a kind of unnecessary marketing boswellocks. Don't get me wrong, it's a really great coffee brewer. The cleaning isn't quite as convenient as the AeroPress, but it's good. And in conclusion, the coffee we get from this brewer is similar mouthfeel to that of an AeroPress with a steel filter. The more body you get with a paper filter, but cleaner than a French press. The carry cup is hefty, but it does a great job of keeping your coffee hot. You can brew up to half a litre in this as well, so enough to keep you going for a fair while. The ability to brew on the go and re-brew if it's not strong enough is the main selling point, and just over 30 quid for a brewer and a travel mug is a big thumbs up from us. Have you used the oomph? Let us know your experiences in the comments below and links to the oomph are in the description down below as well. Now I'm going to step out and let these guys from European Coffee Trip brew up our seasonal coffee winner from the current issue. It's the fantastic Finca de Bregacia from Caravan Coffee Roasters. So to brew this coffee we get a geisha coffee from Caravan Coffee Roasters and we get three versions, three different processing methods and for this video, I will be choosing carbonic maceration because pineapple, jasmine, and mango sounds, sounds tasty, really. Uh, so I'm taking it. Which one is that one? Okay. So uh, this is the coffee. And we are going to brew V60. So we are ready. We have the water, 93 degrees. We have the uh, grinder. We have uh, V60 paper filters and the scales and of course coffee so we can start we can start brewing, i think right? we need so uh, 20 grams of coffee 20 grams of coffee so uh the method of brewing is not what we do usually but uh it's a method that was taught to us by veronika galova vesela it's our friend and she's a slovak brewers cup champion and well, while she was preparing for her performance in... <laughs> <laughs> okay, 20. Back to the Veronica. So Veronica was trying to find uh, her way to brew <laughs> coffee for the championship. And she wanted to uh, create a method that is very simple and easy to replicate. And it's not only for the, for the stage of the Brewers Cup championship, but anybody can use it at home or in, as a bar. So she uses 20 grams of coffee and 300 milliliters of water. And what she does, she, she pours 100 grams every one minute. So that way you have enough time to talk with the customer and uh, observe the process. And it's not very prone to do any errors. And we find if you dial your coffee and temperature in, uh, it can taste really, really lovely. And she told us in the recent podcast that she never experienced a bad coffee made using this method. So that's what we like. Because okay. So it's great. How does it smell, Radek? I smell apricot. Apricot? Apricot. Can be. Let's see. Let's see. Can okay. Be. Next step. We will... Now uh, rinse the paper filter, so we will remove the... It's a, it's a funny feeling, I'm, I'm never, paper. when I'm brewing coffee, I never sit down. So this studio is made differently than our own. <laughs> you look erratic, <laughs> can hardly rinse the paper. <laughs> but you know, this is what we need to learn from Scott. We need to watch more of his videos, and so we learn how to brew coffee while sitting. Right, and do you know what we and forget. Scott, Scott can <laughs> learn from us how to brew coffee when while standing. <laughs> I saw the the caravan coffee at the uh, cafe and co behind Brno. It's a great cafe. If you visit Brno Czech Republic, it's where we have our office, and we are actually filming the new guide, so you can use it. I hope uh, that it will be released really soon. And cafe and Kobliha is a cafe that serves one part of coffee from the one roaster every single month and change it every single month. So the most recently they had caravan. And I saw it on the on the shelf. Okay, let's add. So let's first add the first hundred grams of hundred grams of water. 
Do you fire. remember the longest brewing? I think the longest brewing we've been doing was the Vietnamese coffee. The the, the That's video. True. It was the, ten minutes. It was ten minutes. So we were filming the video of uh, how to make Vietnamese coffee, and it took ten minutes to. <laughs> so it was the longest waiting for a cup of coffee. Okay. It already smells delicious. This is the third round and the last one. So another 100 grams of water. I mentioned that V60 is our favorite method. It's our favorite method when we are in the office, but our favorite method when we are traveling actually is R press. And That's true. I would like to take opportunity to mention our R press movie because we decided last year to create the documentary about the whole story of R press. How was it invented? How it turned into the competition round? and how so many people around the world are using our press whenever they go. And uh, we are in the process of filming. Actually, we are right now in London to talk with Paulina, who is the world our press champion. And in a few days, we are traveling to Melbourne, where we are going to visit the guys who are running the competition, organizers, and it will be the biggest trip of European coffee trip. Not exactly in Europe. We are traveling even further. So this time to Melbourne, 24 hours flight be horrible, but looking forward to taste all the coffee they have there. <laughs> so Nalaj, this is for you. Thank you very much. This is for me. Very sweet, very sweet floral tones. I like it. You like it. I, I... You know, try our recipe and try this delicious coffee from Caravan. Next time you get a chance to get your hands on it. And let us know in the comments. <laughs> how, how was your brewing? And thank you, Scott, for you know, taking us to be part of this episode. <laughs> it was great fun. We hope you enjoyed that. Please check out the European Coffee Trips YouTube channel and we'll leave a link in the description down below. So that's where we're going to end it. I hope you like this video and what we're trying to do here. If you do, please click that like button. If you want to be kept up to date on these videos, then click that subscribe button. And if you haven't seen our latest video, then tap on the screen just down there. Uh, you can also find us on social media at Caffeine Mag. And thanks very much for watching.